Hey it's the end of October and things are rapidly changing here, at least in my part of the world. It just seems like overnight a lot of plants have started to really go from still looking fresh to now looking like it's time for them to go to sleep. So I'm just going to take a quick walk around the garden and see what's still looking good and what's maybe have maybe has some pretty fall color before I actually start to cut things back. It's getting to be that time of the year and we're, ha we're supposed to have some really cold temperatures at night this week um, not so much during the day but we're gonna have a couple of 20 degree nights and if anything is still looking halfway decent that's gonna put them to sleep for good so I want to start to get some cleanup done particularly on the hostas because those temperatures will put hostas over the edge they will just get mushy and get really really hard to cut back and I'm looking at a couple of hostas now that probably should have been cut back a couple of weeks ago. I just haven't gotten around to it. So uh, come garden with me and I'll show you what's still looking halfway decent and what needs to be cut back. Here are the hostas I was looking at from my front porch. And you can see um, they're already, they're kind of, they're done. They're tired. It's time for them to go to sleep. Uh, they've gotten worse over the last couple of days, but they started looking like this a few weeks ago. So I'm going to attempt to get those cut back today because, like I said, uh, if I don't, they'll just get mushy and it'll be really, really hard to get these cleaned up. So these two are definitely ready to go. I think... Um I have garden watchers. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love Halloween. Um, I might cut back the, uh, dead flowers on these Jacob's Ladders, too. Uh, I don't think I'll go too crazy with that, though, because they're not, um, these can be semi-evergreen, so I'm not too, too worried about those, but I feel like the irises are getting wild now. They're flopping. They can be cut back. These, um, sweet potato vines are definitely looking a little bit worse for the wear they just they don't really seem to like any kind of cold temperatures so i think tonight tomorrow night and the night after when we get really cold it's going to really put those to sleep for good and it looks like somebody's been playing with my obelisk it's a little bit crooked so here's more hostas all looking golden some of them look fine. I mean, the Halcyon Hosta looks fine. This one kind of looks fine. It's like these bigger, bigger blue ones are really ready to go. Um, those ones back there look okay. But, you know, we've got lots of leaves falling. The Stilby still looks good. And, of course, the Carex Bowl is golden. Spirea turning a little. Arcusa dogwood has some really pretty foliage on it. And we still have a New Guinea impatient. It's funny because it did not really bloom all summer for me, but now that the sun is lower in the sky and this front garden of ours is getting a little bit more sun and it's not that strong, strong summer sun, that New Guinea impatient has put on blooms. Unfortunately, this one hasn't. That's definitely going to go. Over on this side of the house in our small front rain garden, the Amsonia looks really pretty. But it's definitely floppy. Getting a little dry in the middle, so it's definitely time for that to get cut back. This Amsonia as well, although this one's standing up a little bit straighter. And these variegated iris definitely look better than the ones on the other side. But um, the flamethrower redbud has <laughs> really, really... It's gotten a little bit bigger since we planted it just uh, about a month ago, maybe. I'll have to go back and look at the video, but these leaves are the newer growth, and it's still putting on tiny little leaves in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what the new growth on the flamethrower looks like, and it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, these are newer leaves right there. A lot of stuff over here is definitely looking fall like and some of this is going to be getting cut back as well not obviously not the shrubs but um the father gala really pretty peachy kind of tips on some of these these are all supposed to be father gala gardenii which is the dwarf 
although this one in the middle kind of behaves behaves differently so I'm kind of suspecting that again I was sent the wrong plant because I did order these all from the same online nursery and it's the same online nursery that keeps sending me the wrong plant so I might have to discontinue my ordering from them although I don't to be quite honest with you now that I have some more local sources for plants including the nursery that I worked at there's nothing really that I need to order online but um, you can just see how gorgeous that color is in there. This is Campanula. This is Bellflower. The pretty blue flowers in the summer. Um, it really is pretty in the fall. But it's time for that to be cut back too. I think there's two of them in here. It used to be three. Well, we still have three. It's just that these two get more sun so they do much better. The purple pillar roses of Sharon have definitely gone downhill just in the past week. That little quick fire hydrangea there is losing leaves quickly. This one over here, I feel it's like a week behind because it does get more sun. But um, its foliage is definitely darkening. Some of the leaves have dropped, so it's almost time for that one to go to bed as well. And I feel like with the cold temperatures this week, it's a shame because these annuals, they're doing so well. The color is so beautiful. These were just planted again about a month and a half, a month and a half, two months ago. Because we did some container refreshes for fall. But unfortunately, the 20 degree temperatures this week at night is going to take those. I'm going to be sad to see this one go particular because I think it's so pretty. The oak leaf hydrangea, this one at least is starting to put on a little bit of fall color. Not nearly as much color as the one that I showed you in a previous video, but a little bit. The little Henry Ideas are starting to lose leaves. Just looking, I have three cone flowers back here, just looking to see how they're doing. They're kind of tucked back in there, but the summer sweet's really pretty. And this is what summer sweet does. It really has beautiful yellow fall foliage. This one is a ruby spice. The um, <laughs> poor hibiscus, they're definitely tired and ready to go to sleep. Um, we will definitely cut those stems back. Now you can leave them for the winter if you want, but we generally cut them back really, really hard. You can see last year's cut. We just leave enough to see where the plant is and... Um, these can be treated like a perennial. So those will definitely get cut back. We'll mulch them over. This is a bunch of other cone flowers that will be getting cut back. Uh, the goldfinches don't really last here very long. And they've already been and gone. Eaten some of the cones. The seeds from the flower heads. But look. Just in the last week, this pretty pink cone flower. Really deep pink. Almost like a raspberry put on a new flower and it's even got a new bud and it's weird because these don't get much sun back here the ones up front right now are getting much more sun they haven't done anything so I'm really surprised to see that and I guess it's probably not gonna last hmm, maybe another day or two I, I suspect that bud will never get to bloom which makes me sad but it's funny how these things work Anyway, so I was saying our cone flowers are something that will definitely be cut back because I just don't like the way they look. Personally, like I said, the goldfinches come in late August, early September, and eat what they want and quickly leave again. So um, I'll cut them down to the basil foliage, that green foliage down there. Um, it's just one of my many garden cleanup chores at this time of the year. Coneflowers, at least in my yard, definitely get cut back. The foliage of the Boom Chocolata Hydrangea really deepens into burgundy and red at this time of the year. So pretty. But again, that one's going to need to be cut back. Otherwise, it's going to go mushy. This Dervella that looked good just last week is now going to sleep. Kind of sad to see things go for the season. But definitely need a rest and need some time to start planning for next year's garden. 
chokeberries. Those are low scape hedger. That is a proven winners variety. Definitely really pretty in yellow. The hydrangea standards. Looking pretty as well. It's definitely getting close. I have a feeling after the couple of 20 degree temperatures this week, we're going to wake up to no leaves. The leaves on the trees have definitely started falling. The endless summer twist and shout still looking good, and I'm guessing it's because it's a little bit protected in here. I mean, it still has new blooms. This is a newer flower. This is an aging flower. And you can see how pretty the burgundy is of the leaves. But again, I suspect once the 20 degree temperatures get to this this week, it's going to be done. It's putting on a really pretty show at the moment. Hey everyone, it's a few days later. We definitely had our freeze last night. And um, just about to head out to pull the annuals out of the concrete planters out in our front shady bed because as I suspected they are looking pretty bad this morning. I was able to get the hostas that I wanted to get cut back done and I'll show you what they look like now. I was surprised though, well, actually I'm going to show you the ones that I didn't cut back first because what I did just cut back the hostas that were already looking bad and I left the ones standing that were looking good and I was kind of surprised when I woke up this morning that they're still looking okay. Usually when we have a hard freeze like that, and it got down to about 26 last night, and it's supposed to get cold again tonight, that usually does the hostas in for the season. But they're actually not looking bad, so I'm not going to cut any more of them back. So these two hostas are still looking amazing, which again surprises me. These are the annuals, so those will definitely get pulled today. These ones here look a little bit better, probably because they just get a little bit more sun, but they're still... They're done. You can see the New Guinea impatience are done. It has a bud on it. And it is going to be warm this went this week, this coming weekend and next week in the 60s. But because half these plants look kind of like they're done. I mean that's all mushy and dead. I'm just gonna pull all of them. They're not gonna come back. And then over here, I mean that hosta still looks amazing. These Pastas over here still look really good, but I did cut the big, big ones back here. So I cut that one, I cut one that was here, and then there were two here, one and two. Uh, everything else still looks decent. Just checking on the hookah back here. They tend to suffer all season long. They look great in the spring, but as this bed gets drier and drier because of the huge Norway maple, they tend to get smaller and smaller and you can see that one is smaller compared to that one. I'm surprised that one's still pretty big in that one and then there was one behind the pumpkin we lost. That didn't last a year. These ones at least have been in the ground for about three or four years and I'm debating if I even want to replace the one we lost. I don't know. Either that or we just run the soaker hose over here more often. I mean, you can see it's uncovered because of some runoff, but um, I don't know. They, those, those hookahs looked really, really pretty in the spring with a really pretty foliage and then really pink flowers, and then they just go downhill. But I really like them, so I don't know. I'll have to debate, but in the meantime, I'm going to pull out these annuals, these annuals, and we're going to pull out the New Guinea impatiens that we have planted up on our top retaining wall bed because they were killed overnight by the freeze too. So I'll just show you those real quick. I haven't decided if I want to replace the annuals in those concrete planters with fall annuals or just wait and do something for Christmas. I'll probably wait and do something for Christmas. But anyway, <laughs> these poor deers are definitely done. They kind of look like skeletons from the house. So there's three on this side, three on this side, 
So those will definitely get pulled today. The uh, planters we just did the other day are looking really pretty. Pumpkin spice hookerella even looks better than it was looking the other day. It's getting some more color on it. So, all right, let's go back down. I uh, want to check on the crab apple real quick. Still here. <laughs> Deer haven't gotten to it. Still has some leaves on it. I um, haven't really been keeping up on watering the evergreens that we planted this year. Like this castle, wall, holly, or the two pinpoint blue and gold fall cypresses. I'm hoping we get some more rain soon. I mean, they look fine, to be quite honest with you, but evergreens do not tell you <laughs> when they need water until sometimes it's too late. But I really don't want to have to keep coming up here. I mean, I really don't I want to have to keep coming up here to water because it's hard to get the hose all the way up here. I also want to check to see what the bottle gentian look like that we just planted. Well, they still look really pretty. They've still got pretty blue flowers. Especially this one. I'm kind of excited about that, although it does look like it's suffered maybe a little bit either from the frost or something trampled it. I just came up here to our top shade bed real quick to check on these hostas, and I think I'm not going to do anything else today or tomorrow, but like I said, it's supposed to warm up again over the weekend and into much of next week, so. I think what we'll do this weekend is, like I said, I think I said, try to get the rest of the, or as much as we can, cut back for the year so that everything gets put to sleep, get that taken care of this weekend. I just noticed when I was waking, making my way down, we still, we have a couple pretty cone flowers up here that have put on blooms in the last week as well. There's one there. And I think the camera's picking that up. Yeah, right there, another pretty one. So I'm kind of surprised. And I don't know if up here we'll cut these cone flowers back because, look, even a new bud. a new bud um, this is a like I said a more wild area a little bit farther from the house so we're not gonna see these cone flowers we'll see how far we get over the weekend I might just leave these ones more pretty summer sweet that really does get a pretty fall color okay so let's go back down now and I'm gonna pull uh, I'm gonna grab my gardener supply garden bag and get the rest of these annuals pulled and that'll kind of be it for today.
also thinking about doing since a lot of stuff is on self right now going and getting some green giant arbs for a border up at the top of the property not sure yet because I'm not sure where we'd be able to overwinter them I mean we definitely have a lot of leaves that we're going to have as mulch uh, just not sure that would be enough I really don't feel like healing them in so uh, I'm not sure but I'm thinking about it <laughs> same place that I got the Thea Thin Man has four to five foot green giant arbs. They're only $49.99 and they are 25% off at the moment. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? We'll see. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to bring these obelisks into the garage first and then go do the other annuals up top. So that's that's done that's that done one thing we forgot to do is empty our concrete bird baths we have two concrete bird baths and typically you know we empty them because we don't want the water to freeze and crack them but we completely forgot to do it because even though we knew this freeze was coming I felt like we were completely caught off guard because it's been so warm up until now so I'm gonna get this dumped too I Well, that's done. New Guinea impatience were pulled. I didn't actually put mulch over them. I was able to get enough um, soil off the root balls and just put some leaves over everything. Uh, it got completely and totally muddy and wet doing it, so I didn't want to push the button on my camera to start filming again, so that's why I didn't show that. But those are just some of the chores that I wanted to come out and do. We're nowhere near done yet, but I feel a little bit better because we've gotten, we've made a little bit of a start. So have a great rest of your week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.